Hey, it's Barry. And Dave. And Jake. And Dan. All right. Here with another episode of Hooked on Saltwater. All right. Coming All right. to you from Bucktail Bait and Tackle on US 1 across from Christensen Landing. And Jorgensen's Landing is just to the north of us here. Stone's throw either way or at least casting distance. Mm -hmm. yep. The number one place to get all your saltwater rods, reels, baits, whatever. I mean, everything that you could possibly need is right here for Inshore you. Sure and offshore. And if we don't have it, we'll do our best to get it for you. Absolutely. And what's the hours you guys are open? We're open 6 a.m. till 5 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, Friday and Saturday, 6 till 6. And right now for live bait you got? Uh, all I got right now is shrimp, but we're gonna, we got croakers on the way and hopefully some pinfish. So hey, if you're a bait catcher too, we're always taking new bait catchers and uh, wanting people to catch bait for us because well, sometimes people catch, sometimes they don't. So if you're a bait catcher, man, come on down here, talk to me, and uh, let's do some business. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah, so, so oh, uh, no, I was going to cover what we're going to do in this week's episode, but go yeah, ahead. No, this is post <laughs> ICAST 2022. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're recovering from a, almost a week long. My feet uh, hurt. Uh, <laughs> visiting with different yep. companies and different folks. We put out a series of videos. These were interviews with a lot of guides and mm. some of the bait companies. Really, really good information. So check those out. They are on our channel and uh, great information and good entertainment. Yeah, and good, good products showcase and covered oh, yeah. a wide variety of uh, items yeah. that are up and coming. It yeah. just got released. So check out, if, since you're watching this on Hooked on Saltwater, make sure you check out Hooked on Headwaters. Right. You're going to see some really good interviews over there with a lot of the guys. And then, of course, we have some of the stuff from iCast here on the Hooked on Saltwater channel as well. So to get things kicking off, we're going to talk about what's going on inshore, offshore here with Jake. Dan's going to cover baits and how you can find baits when you're out on the water. Um, I'll give you a quick little fishing update from um, my day out here the other day, how things went, putting a new rod to the test and uh, weather, we're gonna cover that here too. So, Dave, you got any? Up? I'd like to welcome Cotton Dan, <laughs> joining us on the saltwater side. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be our uh, inshore contributor. So, uh, I'm glad to have him on board. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Dan sure knows what's going on on both sides, fresh and salt, so salt pay attention exactly. to what he has to say. <laughs> For sure. Okay, All right. jump on into All right. it. On camera. All righty. Weather-wise, folks, we're looking at a pretty decent week. We got a couple days of um, possible thunderstorms over the next two days, and then for the next seven days after that, we're looking at pretty much rain-free. Um, it's going to be warm, as always, but uh, good days to get out there and do some fishing. So. You got seas are going to be around two to three foot. Wind's going to be uh, a little bit higher side on Friday, up to 15. Then Friday, Saturday, they're calling for five to 10 out mm -hmm. of the southeast. So uh, Saturday, oh sorry, Saturday, Sunday, five to ten out of the southeast. Uh, those would be the optimal days. And uh, yeah, light wind, eight seconds is the interval is what they're calling the swell at right now. Be so nice. That's, Not too bad. Yeah, That'd be nice. Yeah, I'd like it to be like eight days, <laughs> one, and then just wait and it's calm. <laughs> but um, all right, so I'm going to jump in with my quick little fishing report just to update you guys on the mangrove snapper out in the river. They're still they're hitting like crazy. Got out with the family, my wife and my son. Got a bunch of mangroves, got black drum, we got big giant maharas, um, we got sheep's head, all on live shrimp. You can get them down here, Jake's got them. And uh, the little small ones were like our favorite. You know, the shrimp are a little bit small right now anyway, yeah, but the smaller they were, man, the better they were. They were hitting the water and they were just getting hammered. So, um, yeah, if you're just looking for great fish to get out there, catch and make fish tacos out of, you know, which we did, had a really good. Wife made some mango salsa that is just off the charts. So oh, no, I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> really good. <laughs> so if you're into that grocery store shopping right now, it's a great time to be out on the river fishing because all the species that you typically want to take home and just cook for mm -hmm. for dinner, they're they're out there to be to be caught. So mm -hmm. you want to run well, a run a little saltwater report. All right. Offshore. Offshores, we'll start out there. There's still lots of kingfish around real close. I had a guy come in and say he caught a 60 pounder the other day in 50 foot of water. That's a big king right there, 60 Good pounds. Insight. That's a once in a lifetime king. But they're still close in. The mahi are a little bit further out. There's still a lot of scattered weed in close. The clean water is out past 120. It's still a little murky and dirty inside. Um, and then for, as far as fishing wise, uh, the 
Jetty has been on fire with snook lately. The snook bite is just phenomenal right now. They're biting on the thread fins. If you can find a school of thread fins, pushing through or else some Mahara because they're keyed in on those baits that are th presently there. So try to get them um, as well as croakers and pinfish will work as well. Um, and then also the crabs, the redfish are still hitting on the outgoing tide and the past crabs are still in there. So you can scoop you up a couple of those on the way out. And as far as inshore, the flats really warm. It's really, really warm out there. So the fish are biting, but you know, you got to coax them in and get the right shrimp or the right bait mm -hmm. for them and get the job done. Our buddy James Bowman always sending us pictures to come right fishing right across the street here, slamming some nice red fish, slamming some nice big old snook. Um, and that's just within the last couple of days. And that's just waiting on the flats up underneath the docks and under structures. You know, when there's sunlight out, fish for those fish, they're hanging out in the shade mm -hmm. and trying to stay cool. So you want to catch a fish, think like a fish. There you go. Yeah, we don't like to be out in, that hot, in the hot. They don't either. They want yep. to be up in the shade. Yeah. Dave, you got a kayak report? I do. You want to? <laughs> Come on, Dave. Come on back in front of this camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before we turn it over, Captain Dan's going to cover baits, what to look for. So don't go away. He's got some really, really um, good stuff on uh, heading out there. If you want to catch your own bait or you yep. need to catch your own bait, so hang in, hang in there for that. Come from a, a kayaking, went kayaking this week. Got a nice, nice redfish. Mm -hmm. um, Got to fish them early, though. They're in the shade. So if you're up here, we, I like to fish the east, the east side uh, in the shade. Once that sun starts coming up about here or about here, 11 o'clock, goodbye, good night, yep. it's over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you got to pack it in and wait till the evening, get out about 4, 4, 4 30, get ready and wait till that sun sets and the bite will pick up again. And what, what have you been using that, that's been working? So I'm, I'm a big artificial guy, so I use, I'm fond of the Slam Shadies. Mm -hmm. Slam Shady Boys, thank yep. you. Uh, the leprechaun, the paddle tail, worked like a charm. The, what happened was I started out with the white. Mm -hmm. It got cloudy. Water's really murky. Mm -hmm. So I switched up and I got a couple of nice sea trout and then my nice red, which I'll show a picture of. On that nice. leprechaun. On that leprechaun. Okay. Right. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a dark green with gold specks in it. Mm -hmm. Again, the water was really murky, cloudy, switched over and very cool. I always do Trigger good on, on the nuclear chicken color. The chartreuse and pink yeah. nuclear chicken is one of my favorite colors to use. You wouldn't think it, but it yeah. gets slammed. The tarpon uh -huh. were roaming, but no, 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 no one's interested in the bite. <laughs> Tar the tarpon, the juvenile tarpon are all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be chasing those down here shortly. Yeah, I do have tarpon fever, so I will be out <laughs> in a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we're going to be morning. we're going to be going to get get um, on the water video here. So on, you're on yeah. hooked on saltwater. I know on the headwater side we don't get as much on the water video. It's more instructional as far as getting around the lake. But on the saltwater side, we're going to be getting out and doing a lot more on the water, catching fish, showing you the you know the how tos and things like that. So yeah. look for tarpon episodes to be coming up here pretty soon. So. Um, before we bounce over to Dan, hang on just for Dan, I just want to give a big shout out to David's House Inn down here in Sebastian. You're going to find them right there near Captain Hiram's. We'll have their information linked below. If you're looking for a place to stay when you come into town, um, you know, Airbnbs are a good choice, but Kyle's Place is a better choice. He's right on the water, mm -hmm. big rooms, um, super clean. He's right there again, like I said, near Captain Hiram's is walking distance to all those restaurants along that stretch. So you got food, you got, you know, cocktails, you got music, you got everything right there. You can hang out on the dock that's right there at Kyle's Place across the street from the building and uh, see sharks, you can see porpoises, you can see man, you see everything right there. And that is one of my launch sites, so yep. I use uh, the, uh, the dock or near the dock to launch the kayak. So if you're ever staying there, you want to go for, for the kayak trip, give me a shot, and we'll, all you have to do is open the door and walk across the street, yep. and we'll be jacking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful place to stay. So, again, information is down below. So now let's jump over to Dan. Let's talk catching baits, bait fish. You're going to go out for a day on the water. Yep. And think, Man, I need some bait. So, how do you find it? Where do you go? I'm going to head behind the camera again. Well, uh -huh. you can come here. That's the easiest way to do it. That, that you know, is. Come that's why we're here. You know, if you're short on time, um, 
say you just get off work, the tide's right at the inlet, and you need bait, but you don't have time to go catch the bait, or this, this is the place to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or I mean, or if, if you, you know, you need it quick, come to the bait yeah. shop to get it. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is different than what Jake has uh, normally in style. You, you normally have shrimp, croakers, pigfish, pinfish. So I'm gonna talk more about finding mullet, oh, hoagies. Yeah. Um, what to look for in the uh, water, pilchers. by all yeah. means. Yeah, yeah that's that kind necessity. of stuff. That's key. Yeah, so uh, a lot of it has to do with experience and how much time you get to spend on the water. Um, so mullet, uh, for the guys of you that don't know, typically they're a shallower water fish and you can find them in, in shallow water, thigh deep or less, and they make ripples on the water. And that just comes with time that you, you actually learn when you look at the water to see there's something different there. Um, obviously you, the mullet tend to jump a lot. They'll jump uh, and uh, you can locate them that way. And they usually, they run in schools usually. So now if we're talking things like pilchards, mm -hmm. like I was uh, when we were out, mm -hmm. we found pilchards. Um, they're a little bit different. So one way I kind of identify, you can kind of identify the kind of bait by what they're doing or how they're making the water look. Mm -hmm. So pilchards, they ball up real tight and they kind of fry the surface a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the surface of the water shakes in small areas and typically you'll see pelicans diving on them. Um, and what's interesting where a pelican, you can kind of tell if he's on, say if he's feeding on mullet, they kind of get high and they make, they make dives here and there. But things like pilchards, they make repetitive dives. They usually don't get as high, depending on how deep the water is. That's one way to find them. Move in, throw a cast net on them. Um, and uh, maybe one day you guys can do a uh, video with Jake on a cast net. Because there's certain things with cast nets that you need to know that one net does not necessarily cover everything you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, like pogies. Mm -hmm. Pogies, are, they look kind of like a it's red a, fin. Uh, right, mm -hmm. uh, it's a greeny pilcher with a dot on the side of yeah. it. Yeah, people basically. up north call them bunker. If you're yep. way up north, you call bunker. them bunker. Because mm -hmm. he's bunker with the accent. Too. Yeah, with yeah, the accent. Yeah. <laughs> so the, we call them pogies here. Uh, you can find them in the ocean, you can find them in the river, and there's a couple ways to find them. Um, typically, a lot of times they're out near the channel, mm -hmm. in, the, in the deeper in the deep part of the water. water. So if you go out and you, you'll just go to the general area, say out in front of the inlet there, or inside the inlet, down the channel, sometimes you'll see a little flip here. Just their tail comes up, flip, flip, flip. Mm -hmm. And another way to identify them is they mud. Mm -hmm. I they, was just, I was gonna say, yeah. if you didn't cover that, I was <laughs> yeah. the mud. That's interesting. You see a mud spot. A mud spot can be pogies, and pogies mm -hmm. are great. And pilchers, so and pilchers will do it too. Okay. They'll kick up the dirt, and you'll see. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I've caught on pogies before, and there's a thousands of uses for them. One, you can use them for strip baits. A lot of the commercial kingfish will do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, saltwater guys, I can tell you, we've learned a lot of things from the, uh, the sport guys have learned a lot of stuff over the years from the commercial guys. Mm -hmm. So those guys are rich in knowledge. Um, use them for strip baits. You can, if you can keep them alive and live well, you just gotta be careful not to overload your live well. Live mm -hmm. bait on kings, they work fantastic. Uh, all manner of offshore species mm -hmm. that use them. I've caught big red snapper during the season on cut pogey, live oh, yeah. pogey. Uh, one thing you just touched on briefly too, you don't overload your bait well because pogies, greenies, maharas, they are more of a fragile fish versus croakers and pinfish. So you can cram a lot of them in a bucket, but those, uh, the thread fins and the, the herring species, the pogies, pilchards, they don't like to be crammed. So, you know, get you a couple dozen, that's it. If you want to keep them alive, if you want to mm -hmm. kill them, throw them all in there because you'll get a, a yep. net full of a thousand of them. You yep. only want to take a couple dozen, you yep. know, if you want live bait and it, to stay alive. So don't overcrowd your bait well. Good. Right. Yeah. Good. Make sure you Buckets don't do that. and bubblers don't work well for those kinds of baits. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're putting them in a live well, when I turn mine on, I let it run and you want to turn that water over as often as possible so i just leave my bait wells on mm -hmm. when i'm fishing those kind of things um other some other few other visual clues and this is just kind of a basic uh kind of thing one is just looking at the bottom you know polarized glasses are a must in the mm -hmm. fishing world you need polarized glasses because it, you you gain a lot of information. You're missing out. You, have, yeah. You're trying yeah. to see what's there. I have there caught fish see. because I've seen them. Yes. You know, and uh, same way as, as looking at bottom. Now, 
years ago we had a lot of grass here mm -hmm. and that's something that the, the, hopefully the state's going to get this goes. yeah hopefully they'll get this worked out because uh, we need more grasses in, their, in yep. our estuary mm -hmm. but you can look visually one you can see water depth so sometimes if uh, say if you're looking for pilchards you know and they're in certain areas you can kind of duplicate the areas or duplicate the depths sometimes um, what else? Uh, here, another thing with visual stuff, when the wind gets blowing, like uh, you can't always see, say if you're trying to net mullet, mm -hmm. you can't see the bait. So you may have to get, you know, on the lee side of an island or go on the eastern side of the river. That's, yep. uh, you know, if you got an east wind, mm -hmm. it's blowing mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, bird clues, obviously, pelicans, seagulls, uh, up in the shallows, Osprey. wading birds. Mm -hmm. Osprey, they are typically if you don't bigger stuff. Um, one more thing also for the mullet for a good way to find or a key spot to look for them in is around freshwater outflows finger mullet love to have a nice fresh water i found that in the evenings it seems like they'll want they want to go up those little creeks so if you know of a little freshwater drainage outflow into the river it guaranteed to be some bait around there yeah. and um, same thing with the silver jennies people call them sand perch silver jennies goat fish those mm -hmm. they like a nice little fresh brackish mix mm -hmm. but more fresh and a nice sandy bottom so if you're looking for those little silver jennies that's a good spot to go is a nice outflow or drainage mm -hmm. ditch of fresh water Got yeah. It. Yep. yeah that's great advice there uh, so other than that I'm trying I'm looking at my notes Make sure I don't forget anything. What's your favorite uh, size cast net? Okay, you, know, hey, you can you know, the one that I can throw and open. No bananas. Net. There's a big yeah. range there. Yeah. So we're talking cast net. Just the, you know, somebody's brand new or they just want to get out there and try and get their own bait. I think Jake would be able to get it because he sells. Them. I'd say on all around. Yeah. All right. A good, uh, well, it depends on what size bait you're going yeah. for. And say, all right, good size cast net for a beginner. Start off small. Go about six foot, five, six mm -hmm. foot. Work your way up to a bigger net. And then as far as the mesh size, I'd go quarter inch. That way you're not gilling everything. Yeah. You could go as small as a 316th, you know, uh, or a 3 8 is a good common size. But I definitely recommend at least a quarter inch mesh and start off with a six foot yeah. net and get comfortable mm -hmm. and go from there. Because yeah, it does take a little bit of practice and experience oh, yeah. using it and takes yeah. a little we'll bit We'll do a of, video. Depending what? on the yeah. way you throw it. Do a yeah. cast net video. We'll, we'll probably yeah. look for that coming up yep. soon as yeah. a, a demonstration of probably all four of us of how we differently throw a cast oh, yeah. net because there's many ways to throw that net. Mm -hmm. so, you want to know how I do it? I get my wallet out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Come out of here. Here. Can I give you 20 bucks to throw this in? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll throw my net to the bait room and that's bring them exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's definitely, if you haven't done it before, it is, it is a lot of fun because you, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get in a cast. Oh, no. Oh, you I'll get snook. Starfish. Yeah. Oh, uh, sheep's head. You know, all, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So. I was I was at a beach. Yep. There was bait in front of me. I take, take, take a cat, throw, throw the net, I pull up a snook. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> snook. Right. The sheep's head. Yep. Yeah. Sheep's head. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to say about throwing a net is just one thing. We are going to do an in-depth mm -hmm. video about that. Mm -hmm. But um, if you see the, say, the mullet, and you'll see the little ripple. A little more, it'll be a little different than mm -hmm. the normal wind ripple. Cast in front of it. Yes. Don't cast the ripple because they along the they, they will see that net coming, and they're going to. Yeah. Or quick. forward quick so you yep. need to cast in front of the ripple good mm -hmm. point good point yes if you, if you do get out there before we do uh, absolutely mm -hmm. but that was my mistake early on <laughs> <laughs> well that happens to everybody there, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, get, you get anxious oh there we go and that that's how a big net once you get the experience right. to throw a big net right Right, you, you're the the hunt for bait the time shortens yeah no. if you're proficient with a big net which i can throw one once in a while so i typically throw about a seven or eight footer mm -hmm. I, know, I have a friend that can throw a 12 foot net and pancake it every time he throws it but he's yeah. been doing it so life jake can probably do the same thing uh -huh. i like to stick around eight to tens not yeah. 12. So so there's technique and there's yes. difference oh, like right. you say but uh, yeah the, the net take, makes a uh, big difference and the, the education that you have with the yeah. net. Yeah, yeah. But a bigger net, if you're proficient with it, it shortens the amount of time that it takes typically to catch your bait because you cover more square footage of water. Mm -hmm. But uh, an in-depth net video, gonna, you can do several on it this. Is very, well, for me, it's very rewarding to go out and get your, get your own bait and mm -hmm. then 
put it on the hook and catch a fish. fish. It's, yep. Pretty, yep. It, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yep. It's a good ex part of the whole fishing experience. Yep, yep. 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 But again, if you just want to get out and get fishing, Come get in here and first. get your bait yeah. and go. And go. Yep. <laughs> if you want to cut to the chase, cut to the yeah, chase and go yeah, catch yeah. fish, come yep. see us down yep. here at Bucktails. We'll have, take care of you. If I have clients, I, I will come here, grab bait. And, and the best out. place to catch shrimp, without a doubt, mm. is at the bait shop. <laughs> is at the bait shop. There's only a handful of year, times a year That's you can might be able to catch them in a the net. Right. But if you're going fishing, you come yeah. to Bugtails yeah. and get your bait. And those shrimp are tearing it up out there. I'm oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. Everybody likes shrimp. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up for this week. Yep. Do us a big favor. Um, go ahead and subscribe, like, follow us. Uh, we're going to continue to put out more and more content. If you're familiar with our, hooked on, our Headwaters channel, um, we're, and you haven't subscribed, do that. We're right there, just shy of the 3,000 mark. We're going to do a giveaway when we hit 3,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. so, um, you definitely want to go subscribe over there so we can do that big giveaway. We like we love like giving away stuff. Can I make a ride, maybe? I make a ride giving away, or, you know, yeah. when we can. Oh, that's a good yeah. one. Unless, that's unless, that's unless Dave or Barry buy it one. first. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nice ride. Nice ride bill coming up. Yep, that's right. <laughs> and a combo. I like that combo pattern, which I'm very fond of. It's a whole uh, it's stealthy, so catch yeah. more right. fish. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and do that for us. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps us out. We, you know, we just kind of keep going. And then any comments, questions you have, make sure you put them below. Yeah. And uh, we'll get to them as quick as we can. For and sure. And if, if there's any topic you want us to cover, yeah, on, for on sure. Water Got any questions? Uh, comment below. We'll, we'll get to it. And one one last thing. Let us know if you have not, if you either currently slow pitch jig fish or if you've never done it before but you've heard about it and you'd be interested in it. And uh, that's kind of the big thing we want to know because we're planning on putting together a big, uh, a whole seminar on this here at the bait shop. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to introduce the people to the slow pitch jig and scene, which is absolutely a blast. If you haven't done it, I'm telling you, you've got to try it. So. And I'm saying that, and I've done it once, and I can't t stop talking about yeah. it. Captain John, I, who's uh, actually out now, uh, right. he uh, put me on to it, and it's just tons of fun. I haven't Speaking. been successful about it with slow pitch jigging, so I'm going to be attending and listening in this seminar because I want to be proficient at what catching fish on this slow pitch. And speaking of Captain John, if you guys are looking to book an offshore charter, look up saltwater cartel charters. Mm -hmm. Captain John, he will. This guy's phenomenal. He'll put you on the fish. Barry and I had a phenomenal time. Yep. We, I mean, he, we won the fish immediately. Yep. It, we, it didn't slow down. Great, great crew, great captain, great boat. Yep. So saltwater charter, saltwater cartel charters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Information will be here below. And there should be a segment in this video here somewhere of John anyway. He'll be talking to you here remotely. <laughs> All right, folks. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. So long, everyone. Have a great week. God bless. Cheers.